Hey, where are you? And I'm in big trouble. Please, you've got to help. I've got mixed up with the wrong guys. I was betting on sports fishing and I bet on a mackerel and then the tuna came in and now I owe them money and they're not letting me go. Yep, yeah, just put them on. I'll, I'll speak to them. No, they don't want to talk. They just want money, And Like, maybe if you bought my Rolex, then maybe... Not buying the watch. Ah, uh, come on. It's not fake. What well, is? It looks real. It's the final episode of Gap the Asia. And we've saved the best for last. They're going live in half an hour. Hey, Mr. Nami, go on the Philippines' biggest show with the smallest host. Welcome to the Philippines! That's great to be here! They go head to head to see who can sweat the most in sweat racing. Look at that sweat! A little bit hot, guys. And Hamish is facing his biggest fear. Ooh. Let go of my arm. And it's it. My God, have mercy on your soul. Welcome to the final episode of Gap Year for the season. Yeah. Look, it's an emotional time because we're leaving Asia. Yeah. Sad emotions, Ando, mm -hmm. but also some happy emotions. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm talking about? I think I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, <laughs> because we're leaving Asia, we have a lot of small money left over from different countries, and rather than change it at the airport on the way home, we've decided to share it with you guys in a patented Hamish and Andy cash storm. <laughs> Cut down your whooping. People think that, love free money. Yeah, I, I think it equates to about 10 cents. It's all uh, for you. Keep it. Claim it. Didn't even seem like there was much or many notes no, in that bucket up there. I've kept some notes for one-off cash giveaways throughout the night. <laughs> so okay. all that ahead it's and more. Something to look forward to for the audience. Um, the happy emotion I was talking about was our Asian television debut. That's right, yeah. Now, Ando and I did want to get on an Asian TV show uh, this series. We sent out about 50 letters to different shows, just to pump up our resume a little bit, you know, just say we've been on more shows than we have. And in the end, we chose a show from the Philippines. Yeah. Why did we do that, though? They're the only ones that replied. Yeah. <laughs> Very well said. Oh, thank you. Uh, cash, cash giveaway number one. We flew to Manila in the Philippines, running late for our first live Asian TV spot but we didn't exactly know what type of show it was. I've got some info about the TV show. It's like two or three hours. It's long. Um, there's like a little girl that hosts a lot of it, or a bit of it. Like, small in stature. She's or... six. There's a six-year-old girl that hosts a little bit of the show. We rushed into the TV studio, past queues of people waiting to get in, in search of a producer who could tell us where to be. They're going live in half an hour. <laughs> This was a lot more manic than we were used to. We have basically been allowed to walk into the building and onto the set and not said hi to anyone. I really hope we get on the show. With the live show minutes away, we met up with Ruth, a producer on the show, who introduced us to Miss Sheila, who's an executive, and they gave us a quick rundown. How many people watch the show each day? I guess it's um seven to eight, ten million. 10, ten million? million? 10 million? <laughs> wow! So That's this half is... of Australia. Oh. She was impressed. Now, I, we hear there's a girl that, that, that hosts. Yes. What's uh, her name? Her name is Raisa. Raisa. She has her own show. Wow. She's the youngest and smallest TV talk show host. Smallest? In the yeah. world? And the most popular. She has a live studio audience of 550, six times a week, with people of all ages enjoying Rise of Fever. Yeah. The thing is, perhaps she'll be scared of you guys because you guys are really tall. Oh, okay. oh, okay. So should we come out? Should we come out? Sh should we come out shorter? <laughs> yeah, a little bit short. Okay. Okay. We will. Okay. Great. No <laughs> and that was literally the only instructions we were given as we headed backstage. It's eight minutes away. The start is hi there. Show. Hello. Riser. No, no, it's not. Riser. Not ah, Riser. <laughs> Just other children. Still love to know what she looks like. I don't think that was going to happen, Ham because it was three minutes till showtime and we weren't sure what we were meant to be doing. Hi, Ruth. Hi. Hello. I think you should be 
stay there. Where are we staying where? In the stage. In the set. You're gonna sit there then Rice is just gonna approach you later. Okay, we start on the set. Yes. Oh, so this is where we're meant to be, in the front row of the audience, right? Just blocking all the other kids' views. I don't know if we're on the show or we're just in the front row. Rise up, rise up. Either did I, Ham, but we're about to find out because the Rise of May show was about to commence. This is it. This is time! <laughs> She might have been small, but she had the audience in the palm of her tiny little hands. And with her dancing, her opening monologue, Excuse me, Paul. Followed by a bit more dancing, we did begin to wonder whether we're even going to be on the show. Riza, don't you have other guests to get to that might have flown all the way here from another country? Yeah. <laughs> she actually did have a guest to get to. Yassa! Oh, that's your... Whoa. <laughs> She's bigger than Riza. Uh-oh. Andy Likey. Hello, everybody. What's up? What do you think of Riza's sidekick? Riza. <laughs> I like Riza's sidekick more than my sidekick. Yeah. Oh, man, my wingman senses were crackling like a live wire. Who would have thought you would meet your future wife in a neon jungle in a kid's show? I'm warning you, and I am ignoring you. <laughs> well, it was too late to keep arguing as our time had arrived. I got Australia. I got Australia. She said Australia. She said Australia. Australia. That might be it. That could be it, mate. Hello. Hello. Hi, Riza. Hi, Ryze. My name is Hamish. This is Andy. Andy. Single. Andy. Oh, what are you looking at me for? This is my strong single friend, Andy. OK, Hamish wasn't letting up. But we were on TV. What were the instructions again? She'll be scared of you guys because you guys are really tall. Welcome to the Philippines! It's not as great as you Oh, no, it's not. OK, we're coming, we're coming. <laughs> now, she was still scared. Sorry, we're a bit tall. Sorry. So where would you like us? Good question. Well, my first plan was to get Andy sitting next to the full-size girl. I'll just go here. Share it. Share it. Okay. Okay. So, guys, how, how, how's the Philippines so far? Oops, I might have forgotten about Riza. Good. Hey, Riza. It's your little baby. Uh, we're yeah, great, great. It's, it's slightly hotter than it is in Australia at the moment. I'll say it's slightly hotter. <laughs> no. This was working a treat. Keep going, Haim, the audience seemed to be shouting. Andy um, won a beauty pageant called Cleo Bachelor of the Year. Like, Cleo Bachelor. And so I know Riza also won a beauty pageant. Yes. Maybe does she want to do some makeup on Andy? Do you want makeup Because yeah. he's so beautiful. Yes. Makeup. 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 Make make Okay, so while she does while she does his lips, um, like have you guys visited uh, many countries in Asia or? Um, Andy is free to travel because he doesn't have a wife or anything, so. You keep on insisting. Huh? I didn't. I didn't even know I dropped that. I'm so sorry. I was hating this, and tried to get things back on track by inviting Riza to come on our show. When? 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 Oh, you name it. We're pretty easy. Um, you... I'm busy. You're busy. <laughs> OK, what about next okay. week? Could you do it next week? So, 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 no, I'm lingo. busy also. OK, still busy. Gee, Andy had struck out with the full size and the half size. Terrible. I needed to bring out the big guns. She said he can get married now. He can get married. Well... Definitely find someone. On behalf of Andy, I would like to ask you... No, if you would do him the honour of marrying... Oh, I, don't, I don't do drag. <laughs> All right, well, that's enough back in anyone's language. She doesn't like drag, Andy. What did you put all that makeup on for? I guess there was nothing left to do but dance. Crazy. 
try your best, you introduce Annie to a terrific full size and then just <laughs> drops the ball. OK. I wasn't even bothered by Hames' antics there because I know it's coming up and ever since we filmed it, I've been smiling. So stick around, everyone. Still to come, Hamish and Andy put on some weight in all the wrong places. Do I just let go? You won't believe your eyes. The guys get hot and steamy for sweat racing. Oh, there's a lot of sweat. But next... Oh, jeez, it's a funnel. I hope you're hungry, Hamish. Well, that's a big one. Uh... Sumo wrestlers, still some of the most highly regarded sports people in Japan. But there are only a select few who make it to the top. If you're going to reach this height, you must start early. Which means sumo school. So these are teenagers. Yeah, Ham, and they could fight. These guys really wanted to stay inside that ring. All right, this guy was good, and we're invited into the sacred ring to battle him. What he didn't know was, we had a secret weapon. <laughs> 180 kilograms. Mm. Impossible to beat. And after the rituals... Do as he does. The showdown for country and honour was on. <laughs> Yes, we had him. He couldn't muscle us out in that giant suit. We were pushing him back. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we'd lost. We fought well, and Hayman and I were relieved that we could still leave the ring with our dignity. <laughs> Welcome back to Gap Year Asia. Now it's time for a story that's every parent's worst nightmare. No, no, you can't intro it like that because every parent's worst nightmare is something happening to their kids. All right, right. well, it's my parents' worst nightmare <laughs> because something terrible happened to their kid, it me. It wasn't meant to be bad. It's just cultural eating ham. It's a segment we've had on this show for the whole time. Yeah, right. So people might have seen over the series we have cultural eating mm. where we make the other guy eat something that would maybe be a bit weird to us as Aussies. Tonight's cultural eating is by far the thing that's most not food uh, we've done. <laughs> it's also a thing that I have an incredible and intense phobia of, um, information I accidentally shared with my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's spiders. <laughs> it's 3.30. This is like the night before Christmas except it's the devil coming down the chimney and he has a bag full of spiders. As you can tell, Haim is really scared of spiders. So I'd told him the night before that I planned to take him to a spider village, hoping that would help him prepare. It hadn't. You're a bastard. No, I'm not a bastard. You're a bastard. This is a no, bastard. My parents were thing. married when they had me, so I'm not They have accidentally had the first bastard in wedlock. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a bastard-like thing. This continued for much of the two-hour drive. This is going to be good for you, mate. What doesn't kill you can only make you stronger. No, it can terrify you and send you to a madhouse because your brain exploded. But eventually, we arrived. Oh, okay, I think we're here. Ah, oh, yes, there we are. I knew it was after the Maccas and right where the massive spiders are. <laughs> hey, chop. <laughs> I will smash you in the face. <laughs> Cultural eating, man. Cultural eating. I need to make something absolutely clear. When I went to hit Andy, that's what I'm talking about. It's an irrational fear. I can't think and process my emotions when it comes to spiders. What type of spider is it? It's a tarantula. A tarantula? Yeah. Can it get you? Yeah. Right. What if someone's scared of spiders? Uh, usually in Cambodia, also some people scared of spiders. Yeah. Like me. Are you scared? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. But you're still happy to bring me here? Uh, now become uh, normal because I come here many times. All oh, right, uh, okay. <laughs> Have you eaten them? Sometimes. You eat them? Okay, yeah. great, great. It's delicious, man. This is cultural eating. Sorry about the car. I tried to hit you. <laughs> you threatened to hit me in the face. 
that's what I mean. That's, it's an irrational fear. I can't think. Yeah, I don't but think. I was just going, hey. No, you, you know what you're doing. <laughs> but I don't, I can't, I don't have the capacity. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. I don't have the capacity yeah. to think, then act. I just act, okay. then think. So I might punch you. Good to know. We walked through the market in search of the delicacy. We saw grubs. See, they're fine. Grasshoppers. Not a problem. A mixed bag. That looks actually tasty. And then the spiders. Ugh, not fine. Um, Tree, can you explain a bit more about So, tarantula, the taste is like a bacon. No, it's bacon, though. No, it's probably like spider. Keep going. Crunchy and tasty. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you... Oh, <laughs> mate. <laughs> he just has a spider. He just has a live tarantula in his hand, huh? But I was just going to show you the product. It's fresh product. Nothing behind me, please. No one behind me. You didn't have to worry about this guy, Ham. His product wasn't for us because we wanted super fresh spider, which meant going off to catch them ourselves. Something that Haim wasn't that wrapped about. Just say that to him. It's total eating. It's cultural eating, man. Damn. Oh, so the, you know about the segment. <laughs> <laughs> Catching on. So the plan was to jump in a van, follow this attractive spider catching woman to her village, and get ourselves the freshest product available. Oh, Jesus. I was numb with sheer terror. So see the trapdoor there? Yeah. That's this tarantula's under the ground oh, where we are now. I feel like I, I, I want to vomit out of every pore. <laughs> Well, the thing is... Oh, you're definitely not going to throw one on me. I'm not going to throw one on you. I'm glad Andy agreed to that, because I was spring-loaded at that moment. There were tarantula holes everywhere and these kids just wandering around barefoot. You can see deep into it there. Oh, jeez, it's a funnel. They're poisonous. I know they're very poisonous, but they know how to grab them. I asked whether we could. Tree said no. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I mean... Tree, I would, we, I we, we can't do the catching, can we? The spider scare you, then you scare the spider. Mm. Yeah, oh. so... Tell them to get ready to be spooked, then. <laughs> All right, we'll go, we'll go watch from behind here. Yeah. We took our position, and the trick was to simply dig down and grab it out before it can bite you. Here it comes. Yeah, hey, <laughs> no problem. Just let go of my arm. Oh, oh, God, let go of my arm. Let go, seriously, let go of my arm. I can't. OK, you're hurting me more than a spider oh, might at the moment. Just. Frozen, my body's like, locked solid, Ando. Yeah, I know. Our catching buddy removed the spider's fangs and picked it up. Remarkably, it was very calm. What's he doing? Have you organised this to go on me? Please don't say that. Can I have that to put in my friend? No, mate, don't, okay. don't. Yeah, will it bite me? No. Don't, 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 don't. Come on, I don't want, what do you want me to do? Come on. Do what? Just come and, just come and say hello to it. You can touch. I can't, Ando. It's just, you stay there. <laughs> OK, maybe I went a little too far with that one. I'm just, I'm in a weird place. <laughs> yeah, I think my brain, think my brain exploded when you threw the leaf at me. <laughs> yeah, I you've gone in shock. It's like I've had but electroshock I, therapy. I kept my promise, though. I didn't throw a spider at you. You didn't. Okay. What are you doing, mate? I'm watching you. <laughs> I don't know who's working for you and who's not. But unluckily for me, the kids had learned your favourite trick. <laughs> <laughs> OK, come on, everyone in front. Everyone in front. <laughs> Why are you hanging back? All right, listen, kids. So far, this has been the worst day of my life, and it just dawned on me I still had the spider eating part to go. You're, um, you're, doing, you're doing great, mate. You just haven't done anything yet. <laughs> I would like to make a public announcement that I will not be tipping Andy any money during the next bit. <laughs> Thought that might happen. Anyway, stick around. Tip myself. The best part to go brave. on Gap Eurasia. <laughs> Episode of Gap Year Asia, uh, and we're in the middle of Haim facing his biggest fear, tarantulas. No, we're in the middle of Haim facing his biggest fear and then having to eat his biggest fear. <laughs> Why don't we go back to the worst day ever that I've experienced and see what's going on? In Cambodia, particularly in the north, it is common to eat tarantulas. I'd organise this dish for my mate Hamish, who is terrified of tarantulas. 
Is this fe- are you fear vomiting? I think it might be nerves. Or are you just trying to clear breakfast so you can enjoy the spider and it's full? I think it might be nerves. Nerves, all right. And I wanted to have the freshest product available. So, so I know, sorry. I didn't realise there was going to be hundreds of them, sorry. I thought that was the salad bowl. It's the worst salad in the world. One's getting out. Uh, one's on the one's move. getting out. Yeah, cool. Well, that's a big one. Yeah. It was time for fine dining, Cambodian style. So this restaurant has high herd, high turnover. I would really appreciate if you took yeah, a seat. Well, the review's not going great. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. And like all good restaurants, we like to show the meat to the customer before preparation, just so it can be cooked to their liking. Yes, please. I would like it well done. Please, please he would like it well done. <laughs> <laughs> then you simply clean the spider, add the appropriate herbs. Oh, delicious. So what is it? Garlic or garlic, sugar and uh, seasoning. And voila, ready for the pan. I'll do a cigarette butt. I'll do 10 cigarette butts over this. I'd eat that dog. No worries, I'd eat Ravi's dog. That's fresh. Delish. So good, it has customers jumping out of their seats for it. <laughs> Is that... <sighs> Are the chairs not to your liking, sir? <laughs> Explode. It was time to discuss the terms of the cultural eating. I figure a, a sensible bite is half a spider. So you can choose front half or back half. It's completely up to you. You choose, I don't mind. Well, it, you've got his bottom, which is big and could have some juice. But then you've also got a chance of fangs at the front. Let's go to the ass. <laughs> You're going to do it, eat the big bit. Yeah, right, I wouldn't have got that. Right, sorry, straight away, sir. And so it would be. So your meal's ready. Would you like any dipping sauces? No, thanks. We don't have any anyway, sorry about that. Thank God have mercy on your soul. What's the big deal? We do this every day. That was a living nightmare. Just so you know, my nightmare is being smothered by naked Playboy mates, so... Well, I suppose yeah, I you, can live that out as well if you want. If you since nah, since I'm doing all the nightmares anyway, so I just... That, that's my nightmare. Well, just, so, yeah. maybe if I'll, I'll be the nightmare guy, you just... <laughs> <laughs> Cultural eating complete. Notice. Yeah, and uh, kids, don't go eating spiders because nah. I was reading this thing in the Lonely Planet Guide about eating them in Cambodia, and I quote, watch out for the abdomen. It seems to be filled with some pretty nasty tasting brown sludge, which could be anything from eggs to excrement. <laughs> oh no, that's the part you chose. No, it's fine. How do you feel about no, that? No, it's fine. Oh. I know I didn't get the eggs, so thank God I ate spider poo. <laughs> <laughs> A sentence you never thought you'd say. <laughs> uh, I knew something that would cheer him up. Yeah, it's getting my stomach palmed or a bottle of whiskey. Or no, no, no. Uh, visiting uh, some inspirational little kids who play soccer on, the, in a, on a field in the middle of a rubbish dump. Let's try and do. You do know me well. Oh, well thank done. you. Well done. <laughs> we were in the Philippines, each about to coach a bunch of amazing young soccer players on a field with a difference. It's in the middle of the largest rubbish dump in Manila a place called Smoky Mountain. Is the mountain just purely rubbish? Yes, that one is rubbish. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Yep, bizarrely, even though this looks like a mountain, it's actually over two million metric tonnes of garbage. This place has been a dumping ground for decades, as Titanoy explained. Oh, that's rubbish. Yes, yes, that's rubbish. Oh, you can see. Oh, it's... Oh, you see the plastic? 
So it's tens, like 50 years yes, of yes, rubbish. Yes, yes, yes. Over the years, it has attracted over 30,000 squatters who make a living from picking through the rubbish and on selling what they can. It is a survival of the pittest. Right. Uh, you get uh, some uh, garbage, scumbins, and then you sell the junk that you get, plastic, what have you, everything is inside that. And that's what, the, that's what the kids were doing? Yes, uh, everybody's doing that. And it was this problem that Titanoy and his amazing team set out to fix. He recognised that the community needed a change of focus from foraging to schooling. So in 2008, after lobbying for much needed funds, they commenced clearing thousands of tonnes of rubbish to create a soccer pitch for hundreds of kids to use. Oh, sweet. Yes, junior strikers, go, go. You got it. How did this help, you may wonder? We told them that you can play only if, you, if you're going to school. Well, for the last five years, the ground has grown in popularity, which means all these kids are now in classrooms. And as an extra treat, today, they had two brand new coaches. You might want to warn the kids that he did circus tricks instead of sport at Taught school. me how to be a bit creative, though. I can juggle, if you will, many different talents. I coach a little bit by the book. I also tear the book up a bit. So definitely give me the team that's willing to take more risks and glory will be theirs. I'm not sure if he understood all that, but we were assigned a team each. My name's Hamish. Coach Hamish. What kind of formation? Two, one, three? Three strikers. More attacking. First things first. Energy, Mentos, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, okay, get as many as you can. Don't pick, don't eat the rocks. Yeah, the coaches had pretty different methods. Go! So now about to 80%. So you try spinning around. Everyone try spinning around. Kick your bottom, kick your bottom. When I was in year nine, my coach was called Mr. Michaelakopoulos. So this? And we used to just get it to a kid called Vlado. So who would be the Vlado amongst you? It was two minutes till game time, and we gave our final advice. When someone scores a goal, we should all do this. I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but I think you might even be better than Vlado. I can see that that's big for you. Hey, mate. Good luck out there, mate. Oh, absolutely. Cheers. Love this. I live for this. Yeah, cheers. What are we putting on this? Loser has to eat rubbish mountain. Oh, no, that's stupid. Why don't we just go, loser, losing coach gets a ball on the bum. OK, I like the World Cup. Yeah. <laughs> they do it after hours. <laughs> Good luck. Great kick. The game got underway, and it was clearly going to be a battle of coaching smarts and strategy. Get it to Vlado, get it to Vlado. What we talked about, set play. Moving back, moving back. That's Give me a lead. Oh! Get it to Vlado. Guys, I think Vlado might be open. Two deep on the post. One at the top. Still back. Try and dack him, dack him. Pull his pants down. Vlado, Vlado, Vlado. Yes. Good boy, Vlado. Use the wings. Bravo, Vlado. The kids toiled. All the way! But still no one had scored with only three minutes to go. Not even Vlado. Don't let the shot get away. Oh, great save! And with seconds to spare, Good cross. the deadlock was broken. Yes! Do your thing! Yes, do the thing! We're going to be doing this! Yes! Guys, it can't all be Vlado. He can't play defence as well. Victory. <laughs> An amazing team effort. And better than any trophy was the opportunity to kick balls at the opposition coach. Hey, Mish. Cha, cha, cha. Hey, Mish. Cha, cha, cha. Thank you. Silver lining. One, two, three, go. <laughs> oh, all right, mate, that'll do. Oh, a few bonus hits. Uh, oh, all right, OK, I think we've all had fun. Damn it, I think that was Vlado. Next is Hamish versus Andy in sweat racing. Oh, no! Someone hold his hair back! But later... You got five pounds on your balls. The Taiwanese man do things I thought were impossible. Oh, hand cheek! Time now for Hamish versus Andy. 
Still got it. In the season finale of Hamish versus Ali, Andy, we realised that in the tropical humidity of Thailand summer here, we've had some epic battles. We've really sweated it out against each other. Mm, but tonight, we wanted to sweat it out against each other the most we've ever sweated it out before. Mm. And by it, I mean sweat. We wanted to sweat sweat out. <laughs> the sport of sweat racing is simple. Two men, two airtight perspex boxes, one hour inside them. Whoever sweats the most wins. Welcome to Bangkok, where the hot boxes are in place and the conditions are perfectly sweltering for this epic sweat race. But for a rules refresher, here's Ryan Shelton. In sweat racing, competitors spend 60 minutes inside custom airtight hot boxes with life pipes and drippers providing air and water. The competitors' sweat will run through the grate, then the funnel, and finally into their secure sweat receptacle. All other bodily fluids are strictly prohibited and will be closely monitored by two referees or crotch watchers. After 60 minutes, the most sweat wins the race. Back to you. And there's that all-important funnel. And as this scorching Thai sun beams down and the locals find cover, Ryan Shelton is on the ground. Well, if you think it looks hot out here, Ian, it's like a sauna in these boxes. It's just... New shorts, Ryan? Yeah, no, I bought them uh, yesterday from the market. They're very, very short, aren't they? That's the fashion, I guess. That's how they told me to wear them. Well, they're not doing you any favours at all. And here are Hamish Blake and Andy Lee, ready to sweat. And while they want to stay hydrated, they don't want to drink too much and face a potential wee issue in front of the crotch watchers. Ah, too much. Uh-oh. Fans already flocking as the competitors derobe and have any pre-sweat removed before they enter the box. And here we go. Three, two, one. And we are sweat racing. Blake struggling with the latch on the hot box, as is Lee, but they're in now, ready to start sweating. Lee doesn't waste any time, and Blake is cool as a cucumber. But not for long, as he too is now moving. Well, this is a 60-minute race. They'll have to pace themselves. There's another angle that we have for some reason. Well, as you can see, they're only minutes in, and already these boxes are at 36 degrees. Yes! Well, you heard Blake there already spotting his first signs of sweat beads. Come on, son. Give me your best. Son the back. Lee making the most of that sun on his back. Did you remember sunscreen? Remembering the important slip slop slap message. But Blake too busy executing the reliable leapfrog technique, which not only exerts energy, but also manages to shake the sweat from his body into the funnel. Smart sweating. Eight minutes in. And while Lee executes a trademark power minute, we'll take this opportunity to cross live to another sweat race happening in Singapore today between sweat veterans Xin Lu and Kim Fo, both in terrific form of late. But back here in Bangkok, the sweat is really starting to fall as these fans witness true athleticism. Ryan, how's it look from down there? Yeah, it's amazing to see professional athletes at work. It's just so inspiring or perspiring to see it in real life. Back to you, I just thought of that. Well, I got it, but I didn't like it. A third of the way in now, and Blake takes a breath of air through his life pipe. Oh, don't look directly at the sun! Out! A few enthusiastic fans watch Andy hydrate himself through his dripper. <sighs> but will you look at Blake? A world-class sweater. Quite literally like water off a duck's back. Well, you'd have to say he's in the lead now. 24 minutes in, 42 degrees in the box. But Lee has a problem. Uh, Andy, if you can hear me, are you thinking of leaving the box for a toilet run? I'm going to have to. He's keeping too close an eye. Well, these referees don't miss a thing, but Lee will be risking precious sweat time if he leaves, as Hamish too seems agitated down there. <laughs> I'm all good. I'm not waiting. I'm good. Oh, wait, movement in Lee's box, Ryan. Incredible, he is going for a wee, and it looks like Hamish is following suit. Well, extraordinary circumstances, as both sweaters now taking a toilet break. Just number ones, it seems. Ryan's with them now. Yes, Ian, they're just finishing up now. Hamish, has that helped? Yeah, look, I've lost some fluid, but I really needed to. I imagine he wants to get back into that box as soon as possible, and he's still finishing up. A lighter Blake making good time as he returns to the arena, as does the wee Free Lee. Blake steps back in his box, which has now hit an inconceivable 48 degrees. 
35 minutes in, and Ryan's got a close-up view. Ryan? When you get down close, you can really, really see how much sweat is actually coming down. I'll have to leave you there, Ryan, because Blake is struggling. He needs to be very careful not to vomit in there, as the referee could pull him up for that. Even a dribble could see him disqualified. Well, as Blake hunches over, looking defeated, Lee continues to produce more sweat. Yes, Ian, right at the halfway oh, point uh, now, and we're looking very... Yeah, sorry, not now, Ryan. Oh, okay. We're obviously monitoring this Blake situation. <laughs> Bloody Shelton. The sweat does continue to fall for Blake, but he clearly needs to do some sort of, well... <laughs> spew, I suppose. Lee stays strong. <laughs> Eagle-eyed Cherry watches on for any illegal fluid. But Blake has a big decision to make now. In or out? And he's out the door. Oh, no, someone hold his hair back, for Christ's sake. Just a bit of a spew there. But... It sure is, Ryan, but Lee knows he needs to make the most of this. His referee's losing interest, but Lee certainly isn't, as he whips this crowd into a frenzy and gets back to work. This is exactly what Lee needed. Look at that sweat. Wow! With only 15 minutes remaining, Blake now finally steps back into his box. That sun has been relentless on the bodies of these two sweaty Betties. But after some 50 minutes at almost 50 degrees, Lee still managing to make it rain. In a final sweaty dash for the line, Blake and Lee doing their final shake, squeeze and scrape as they attempt to get every last drop they can into their respective receptacles. Three, two, one, that's it. Out they come. Ryan's with them. Yes, Ian, that's it. They're both out of the boxes now. Hamish struggling. Well, this sport really takes its toll on these sweaters, but they've done themselves very proud as they each wring their jocks dry of their remaining sweats before the final amount is revealed. We quickly and effortlessly jump forward through time to find out today's winner as the two receptacles are collected and placed on the judges' table. Andy Lee will be revealed first. Ooh, 487 millilitres. Not being a heavy sweater, he's pleased with that performance. Blake will hope for more, though. He'll need 488 millilitres or more to win. And he's done it with ease. 662. Wash, or more accurately, a dirty brown wash, as the crowd politely congratulates Blake. Still sweating, touch it, yeah. That's it from me, and like I always say, I'm Ian Danter, and I'm gonna make you sweat. Well done, Ian, my sport, my favourite sport. The trophy goes to him, and as it's the last of the season, Celebration swim! Great, yes! <laughs> Get in at home, drink it up, replenish your fluid. The second best drink to replenish behind Gatorade <laughs> is human sweat. More gap year after this, everyone. <laughs> Next, is it for Ron at all? Hamish and Andy go out swinging. Oh, oh careful! Oh. Gap Year Asia. <laughs> On our travels, uh, don't throw coins at people. It really, really works. It's taking someone's art, don't pan around, it's fine. Fine, they've uh, got the money to pay for the surgery. <laughs> On our travels, uh, we've met quite a few martial arts specialists here. Yeah, that's uh, true. From Muay Thai boxers, uh, we met Shaolin monks. Yeah. Uh, sumo wrestlers also in there. Yeah. That guy <laughs> that yelled at your guts to try and make you poop blood. Yeah, OK. Uh, he yeah, was great. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have included him. Anyway, we weren't very good at any of them, and we nearly gave up. We did, until we went to Taiwan, mm. where we found a martial arts discipline where the whole thing is pretty much just lifting weights with your... Be careful, Pete. Yeah, just not, <laughs> not your hands. We flew to Taiwan as we'd heard there was a martial art called Jiu Jiu Shen Gong, where men lift weights entirely with their nether region. How's yours feeling? Got into hiding. We're not... Are we going to do it? Or are we just going to watch them do it? Isn't, watching them do it seems a bit weird. But they're professionals. I still don't even really believe that it's a thing. It is a thing, and it's practised by males to increase fertility as well as bedroom stamina and strength. 
This was the master, whose name was Frank, and we sat down to ask about the weightlifting. Um, where, where is it tied? So this far. Yep. yep. And, and this far. Uh, yeah. So you're really, everyone's lifting together. <laughs> like the, the three musketeers, so to speak, of your man party are lifting. You just have to build up all your powers, yeah, like yeah. focus on this part, mm -hmm. so you get the muscles, and then with your chi, mm -hmm. so that's why you can carry the weight. Ah, right. And it's a heap of weight, ranging from five pounds to a whopping 450. So that's hanging off. Go ahead. Enjoy. Go ahead, enjoy! <laughs> well, before we enjoyed, we had one more key question. Has there ever been any accidents where, unfortunately, you have a Frank and two beans on the floor? <laughs> and then another Frank writhing in agony? <laughs> Has that ever happened? <laughs> yeah, I just thought we'd skip the translation for that one. Still, this martial art is centuries old, and despite the risks, there are many people that practice it. What made you want to do this? Um, before I play golf. Okay. okay. I like yeah. golf for well. more than 20 years, but is it a much better exercise than we'll lose less than balls? Play golf. Is it like your whole body feels better afterwards? Yes, and and your wife will be happy too. And your wife. <laughs> That's good to hear. Because at the moment, very happy. I can I know that watching this, she might not be very happy about what's about to happen. Well, Ham's wife, turn off your television now. All right, swing and loose. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Have the same undies. <laughs> they really are good friends. <laughs> We were issued with modesty skirts and there was only a small bit of preparation required before the lifting rope was ready to be tied on. Warm up. Warm up. I'll warm up the area. Okay. Just, what is it, just juggling, general juggling, stretching? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and uh, swimming. So what, strain it? Uh, uh, swing, swimming. Oh, swing it. Swing, yeah, swing it. Oh, yeah, no worries. Oh, yeah, the windmill. So we found a private corner to do what we were told and moments later, we were ready. Do you want me to present my last samurai? No, Ham. There was one more question before they tied on the rope. Port or stubble? Which side do I address? Slightly port. And with that decided, guess it was time to set sail. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> it doesn't feel right at all. Just right, Frank? The tie did that. Okay. Other, otherwise. Tie didn't tie. We're sure? Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Okay. Are you just putting it on? I feel like it's tight. Oh. I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding that, I'm holding that. Do I just let go? Yep, you just let go. Oh! Ah, it's, it's good fun. Oh. Ah. Yep. Have hey, you got five pounds on your balls yet? Not yet. Ah. You got five pounds on your balls. Oh. I got five pounds on my balls. Pray to God it doesn't fall. We got five pounds on our balls. I thought one was going to pop. You're okay, you're okay. I was really struggling. How was Haim doing this? Looks like we picked the right year for nine to get Australia's Got Talent. I would have gone too far. I would have gone too far. I think, I don't, I don't think. Are you going over the champ? Yeah, I just feel like I've strained it. I can't think of why. I'm not. Our first challenge was complete. What's that noise? He's just having a little warm up by himself over there. And as he continued warm ups, we pressed on with the 10 pounds. Now we're back to pain. Now we're back to pain. Oh, what's it doing, Ando? Remember, you can never unsee this. Oh, it doesn't look good. No, I know. Seriously, on the no, left hand side, there's some serious veins. Seriously, it looks like something's about to burst. Oh, yeah, God, no. Which side? Just which side? Oh, there. Yeah, that. no, that's right. Arnold. 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 <laughs> that's Arnold. <laughs> that's normal. He's, he's a little vainier. Whereas Dave's more of the cool cat, knows a few facts, fun to have at a party. Fair Although fair. sometimes when I bring him out at parties, it's not that fun. <laughs> All right, crisis averted. Enter a new crisis, our final challenge, the 20 pound weight. I wasn't sure if I had it in me but the master said that the health properties of this lift were enormous. We were both poised and ready to lift. One. They said we'd never amount to anything. Two. And make you proud, Dad. Three. I don't think I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is all not 
gas in the tank to lift up the rocket. No, no. I'm off. I'm off. Oh! We've done it. In half an hour, we'd probably doubled our fertility. Master. Yeah. Is this a uh, is this a waste if I don't have a a girlfriend or a wife? So. Yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. We thought we were heroes, but as it turned out, we'd seen absolutely nothing yet. These genital geniuses were about to blow our minds and our manhood out of the water. Oh! Yeah, if you can actually believe it, it gets weirder. Stick around for the end of Gap Year Asia. <laughs> Gap Year Asia, and we're at a place in Taiwan where they practice a martial art discipline known as Iron Crutch. Do you think it's a lot of pressure having the world on your shoulders? <laughs> Imagine having it just swinging off. No, you're not allowed to, don't, come on. Just yeah, off a coat hook, for example. <laughs> we were in the dojo of the Zhou Zhou Shang Gong art, where men lift weights with their crotch, and these masters were about to show us how the pros do it. That there is 50 pounds, and we had our doubts as to whether it was even attached. May we just see underneath his skirt just to check? Is it? How do we know whether it's attached? attached? Okay. Yes. Oh! <laughs> She's on. She's on. Just came face to face with pure, pure strength. So that a, a, a plum. I'm well done. But things were about to get more unbelievable as the master told us his student could lift a human. You can, that, that's what the chair's for? Yes. Someone sits in the chair. Yes. I volunteered. Hamish. <laughs> Ando. <laughs> Some stuff's happening under here. Do your hands. Do this? Yeah, no worries, because I accidentally just looked up and I saw all the secrets of the universe. That's it. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Well, probably three angels. Well, well done. done. <laughs> well done. And congratulations. congratulations. Great, great lifting. <laughs> but just when we thought we'd seen the best the dojo had to offer, we came face to face with this man. And a challenge not fit for an elephant, let alone a human. 10 20 kilo plates. Two. 100 kilos. That's well over two Hamishes. Hello. <laughs> That's one very, very strong member. <laughs> the student did his final warm-ups and then got strapped in. We didn't want to see a disaster, but we couldn't look away. Just a normal guy who looked a lot like a mid-level accountant at an IT firm was about to lift something only slightly lighter than planet Earth with his groin. Good luck, old man. <laughs> Amazing. I wish he was my dad. The session was over. Time for us to grab an ice cold beer and pour it down our pants. What a way to end. That's it for this season of Gap Year. Thanks so much for being with us. No, uh, Ando. Yeah. Can I cover everyone's attention, please? No, we don't, we don't have time for a song, mate. We don't have no, time for No a song. song, something better. Um, I thought I'd try and equal what that guy did no. and lift 450 pounds. I don't think that's a good idea, mate. I, They've practiced for matter. years. Mind over matter. No, it's not a about mind over song. matter, it's about practice. Great name for a song and also what I'm about to do. You ready? Here we go. Great gap here, everyone. <laughs> Three, two... Love you, Ando. Cheers. One. <laughs> Oh my god, we're gonna need an ambulance. Oh. Uh, thanks very much for watching Gap Year Asia. The DVD is out next week. Does anyone know a good plastic surgeon? Are you a plastic surgeon? Oh my god! No! Till next time, see you later, alligators. If you liked that one, or actually even if you didn't, watch the next. It might turn you around. If you haven't enjoyed any of these videos, hit the subscribe button to close this window. <laughs> <laughs>